Lecture 9.1 Power Series Start with a square one unit by one unit. We section off half the square so we have an area of one half. We take half the remaining area which has an area of one fourth. And we keep adding. The next section has an area of one eighth, then one sixteenth, one thirty second, one sixty fourth. And if we keep going like this forever, we will have filled in the entire square and we will have an area of 1. This is an example of an infinite series. This series converges, that is, it approaches a limiting value. Here is another way to demonstrate that this series converges. Let s equal 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 thirty second and so forth. Multiply both sides by 1 half. On the left we have 1 half s. On the right we multiply term by term using the distributive property. And we get 1 half s equals 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 thirty second. Next, we subtract the result from the original series. On the left side, we get 1 half s. On the right side, all the terms cancel out except the first one. So we get 1 half s equals 1 half. Multiplying both sides by 2, we get s equals 1. So our original series had a value of 1. Many series do not converge. For example, this series, which looks somewhat similar to the previous series, does not converge. Rather, the partial sums keep increasing and it approaches a value of infinity. In an infinite series such as this, a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so forth equals the summation from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k, a1, a2, etc. are terms of the series. a sub n is the nth term. We can find partial sums s sub 1 is just the first term, a sub 1. s sub 2, or the second partial sum, is a sub 1 plus a sub 2. s sub 3 is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3, or the sum of the first three terms. So s sub n is the sum of the first n terms. We write the summation from from k equals 1 to n of a sub k. So this is the nth partial sum. If s sub n has a limit as n approaches infinity, then the series converges. Otherwise, it diverges. Geometric series. In a geometric series, each term is found by multiplying the preceding term by the same number r. 
we'd have a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus a times r cubed plus, and we keep going, the general term is a times r to the n minus 1. So the sum is the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of a times r to the n minus 1. This converges to a over 1 minus r if the absolute value of r is less than 1 and diverges if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. We say negative 1 is less than r which is less than 1. So the interval from negative 1 to 1 is the interval of convergence. Example, 3 over 10 plus 3 over 100 plus 3 over 1,000 plus 3 over 10,000, etc. Could also be written as 0 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 plus 0 0.0003 and so forth, which is equal to 0.333 repeating, which we recognize as one third. We can confirm this by taking the first term, 3 tenths, over 1 minus r, and r is 1 tenth. So 3 tenths is a, the first term, 1 tenth is r, the ratio. So we get 3 tenths over 9 tenths, or 3 ninths, which is 1 third. Example 2, 1 minus 1 half plus 1 fourth minus 1 eighth. The first term is 1. The common ratio is negative 1 half. So the infinite sum is 1 over 1 minus negative 1 half, where 1 is a, the first term. Negative 1 half is r, the common ratio. So we get 1 over 1 plus 1 half, 1 over 3 halves, which is 2 thirds. The partial sum of a geometric series is S sub n equals a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then, when we take the limit as n goes to infinity of a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, r to the n approaches 0. And we get a over 1 minus r. If the absolute value of x is less than 1 and we let r equal x, then we'd have this series, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot dot dot, which sums to 1 over 1 minus x. The more terms we use, the better our approximation over the interval of convergence. A power series is in this form. The summation from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x to the n, where c sub 0, c sub 1, c sub 2, etc. are constants. The series in this form is centered at 0. Or if we write the series in this form, the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n x minus a to the n, the series has been shifted to the right a distance of a. The coefficients c sub 0, c sub 1, c sub 2, etc. are constants. The center a is also a constant. The first series would be centered at the origin if you graphed it. 
second series would be shifted left or right. A is the new center. Once we have a series that we know, we can find a new series by doing the same thing to the left and right hand sides of the equation. For example, if I start with 1 over 1 plus x, this is a geometric series where r equals negative x. So the series is 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, etc. To find a series for x over 1 plus x, we multiply both sides by x. And we get x minus x squared plus x cubed minus x to the fourth, etc. Example, given 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, find 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. If I take the derivative with respect to x of 1 over 1 minus x, which is the same as d dx 1 minus x to the negative 1, I get negative 1 minus x to the negative 2 times negative 1, or 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared, which is what I was looking for. So 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared is equal to the derivative of our original series. We evaluate the derivative by differentiating term by term. One more example. Starting with 1 over 1 plus x equals 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, find the natural log of 1 plus x. If we integrate 1 over 1 plus x dx, we get the natural log of 1 plus x plus c. Hmm, we have to figure out what to do with the plus c. Let's try something else. If we start with 1 over 1 plus t equals 1 minus t plus t squared minus t cubed, and then integrate both sides from 0 to x, On the left side, we get the natural log of 1 plus t evaluated from 0 to x. And on the right side, we get t minus 1 half t squared plus 1 third t cubed minus 1 fourth t to the fourth evaluated from 0 to x. Putting in x and 0, on the left we get ln 1 plus x minus ln 1 plus 0. And on the right, we get x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth. Of course, when we plug in 0 on the right, the terms all disappear. And on the left, the natural log of 1 is 0, so this term disappears. And we get ln 1 plus x equals x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth, where x is between negative 1 and 1. The previous examples of infinite series approximated simple functions such as 1 third or 1 over 1 minus x. This series would allow us to calculate a transcendental function to as much accuracy as we like using only pencil and paper. The natural log of 1 plus x equals x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth when x is between negative 1 and 1. 
You can imagine before the invention of the computer or the calculator, this would have been extremely powerful.